This is my Titanium PowerBook G4, 867 megahertz, which I've upgraded to one gig of RAM and 120 gig SSD. Uh, it's probably my favorite computer of all time. This actually used to be my daily driver laptop. Uh, not the specific one, but actually a little bit of an older one, uh, 667 megahertz. Uh, and that was a computer I learned a lot of the skills I use today on. Photoshop, web development, all kinds of stuff that I still do today. I started out with this computer here. It was released almost 20 years ago, uh, January 9th, 2001. And I think my favorite thing about this laptop is how ordinary it looks. Um, and the reason for that is this was really the mold for all modern laptops. So back when this came out, it was really revolutionary because other laptops looked like this and this and this. But this came out with a gigantic screen. You know, the bezels are super slim even for today. Uh, nice keyboard, nice solid trackpad. Uh, it was really ahead of its time. It was like a computer from the future. And another thing that really blows my mind is that you could still use this computer today for modern web tasks. You know, maybe a little slow, but still it works just fine. Um, I have 10 Fox on here. I can browse the modern internet just fine. Uh, one gig of RAM and an SSD, and it's actually not that slow. I mean, I have some Intel Atom-based computers and they feel a lot slower than this thing does. I mean, searching Google, that's about as fast as any modern computer, really. So that's pretty amazing. And if you think about it, this came out, you know, this line of computer came out 20 years ago. And 20 years ago, you couldn't use a 20-year-old computer to do modern early 2000s internet stuff. So this computer today can browse the modern internet, but 20 years ago, you couldn't use like an Apple II to do 2001 computering. So that's pretty crazy. Um, you couldn't take an Apple II into a coffee shop in 2001. Uh, people would look at you funny, but if you took this into a Starbucks today, people wouldn't think anything of it. It just looks like a real modern computer. Another thing I use this computer for is burning CDs, uh, especially CDs for other Macs. Uh, maybe I'm just superstitious, but it seems like when I burn Mac ISOs from my Linux machine, a lot of times they don't work. So I'll burn them instead on toast here on this PowerBook. Also, this PowerBook is one of the last machines that could natively boot into Mac OS 9. So this is a great machine for playing OS 9 games and running other software. Uh, just messing around with Mac OS 9. So anyway, let's take a look at the tie book and take a look at some of the upgrades I made. Uh, we'll take it apart and look at some of that stuff inside. And let's see some of the stuff it can still do. If we take a look around the outside, here on the left-hand side, we have a PC card slot. And then on the front, we have the latch and we have a CD-ROM drive. No, this is a DVD. ROM drive and also a CD writer, so a super drive. Uh, nothing along the right side except for a vent and a Kensington lock. And then on the back, we have the intact door, which this thing is often broken off on these guys. Uh, and back here, we have a Firewire port, Ethernet to USB 1.1, uh, DVI, uh, S video out. Um, and a modem. Uh, we also have the power connector here. 
And then the latch is pretty nice on this. Uh, and this is one of the common things to fail, but it's clever. You push the button and it kind of pops up a little bit. And then you can lift the thing open. Uh, in my old uh, tie book that used to be my daily driver, the hinges are what broke. Uh, these ones are very nice and sturdy. Uh, and then in here, there's a little thing, uh, latch thing that comes down and there's a magnet in the base here so that when you get just close enough, it flicks out and then latches shut. So that commonly breaks. Unfortunately on this one, all that cool stuff is intact. And then on the bottom here, uh, we have a battery and the cool thing about the battery is it has this little button that shows you the charge and actually this battery still does hold a charge. And this is one of the original power bulk batteries and very surprisingly still holds maybe an hour's worth of charge. Okay, let's crack this thing open and take a look at some of the upgrades inside. Now, all of these screws are Torx T8 screws and I have a nice little T8 bit here. So here we have the SSD that I fitted. So let's pull that out. These are also Torx T8 screws. And there's a little thing in here that kind of pushes down to hold it in place, which is a little bit annoying. And here we go. So this is an IDE, uh, SSD enclosure and I'll open this up so you can see what's inside. So inside this adapter is just an M.2 SSD. So this just converts it to IDE and this was very inexpensive and it works great. It's amazing. It's extremely fast and I had no trouble at all uh, installing Mac OS X or Mac OS 9 on here. And then to get to the memory, once we have the screws on the other side off, we can just push down these two little latches here. And there's also a lock in the center of the keyboard that you have to turn with a small flathead screwdriver. And the keyboard lifts off and exposes our two RAM chips here, which are both a computer bay with a K512 PC133 SD RAM, 133 megahertz. I think this takes 100 megahertz, but of course uh, 133 is backwards compatible. And this is non-ECC unbuffered memory, which is what's recommended. I'm not sure if all of that is required, but that's what we have in here and it works really great. All right, let's check out how well some games run on this thing. First one, one of my favorites is Star Trek Elite Force. This game was released in 2000, uh, September, which is just before this laptop was released. And it uses the Quake 3 Arena Engine, or ID Tech 3, and it runs extremely well on this computer. I mean, it's smooth, full resolution. It runs great. 
Next up is some good old Warcraft 2. Uh, this game's a lot older, of course. Came out back in 1996 for Mac. Uh, so this Mac specs are well above what is required. And so far above actually it causes some issues in that scrolling the map uh, goes way too fast. So it kind of interrupts gameplay because it's just an instant scroll all the way over. Uh, but this game runs great and Battle.net version did fix that. And then here's some Fallout 2, one of the best games ever made. This game came out in October 1998, uh, but it has a pretty simple engine, low system requirements, and runs great on this laptop. Uh, this laptop is actually my first experience with this game, uh, and it runs great, so I definitely would recommend uh, using this laptop if you want to try out Fallout 1 or 2 for yourself. And then finally, let's play some Alice. So this game came out mid-2001, and honestly, I'd never heard of it until I was browsing uh, the Macintosh repository game section and just randomly ran across it. Uh, it's a really interesting 3D game with really excellent graphics and excellent voice acting. It's sort of a dark, creepy Alice in Wonderland kind of thing, so I highly recommend it uh, if you've never heard about it. I did come out on like PlayStation stuff, but it runs really great on this tie book. So that about does it for this quick intro to my Titanium PowerBook G4. Uh, as I said, this is one of my favorite computers of all time, and I think probably one of the most important laptops of all time because it really defined every laptop to come after it. Uh, this was my daily driver for many years, and I have a lot of fond memories of this computer. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.